Welcome to Tales from the Flipside, bringing you another episode of Dealer Flipside. Let's go around and introduce everyone. Hi, I'm, T- I'm Samson, uh, comic book journey, uh, long live to journey. Uh, Sean, at Big Leg, everywhere you can find a big leg, that's me. What's going on, guys? Brian, Superman's Comics, got a small little YouTube channel, and I'm also on Instagram as well. And thanks for having me, guys. I'm looking forward to uh, this. Thanks Thank for joining you, Brian. Us. Welcome, Brian. Hey, uh, this is Phil with Vintage Comics and Toys. He's passing uh, Joe time. Red Hood comic. And I'm Aaron, and you can catch me on also on Comic Book Food Chain. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Brian's been explaining the rules backstage, and so he understands how the game is played. For our first set of books, we have Spider Girls number one, the one in 50 Jeff DeCall at a CGC 9.8. And we also have a Amazing Spider-Man 607, CGC 9.6. Uh, I believe, to my understanding, that the best offer accepted on the Spider-Girls number one was 110 shipped. Uh, let's start off with Samson. Oh, man. All right. Uh, so, all right. So I've been looking at this book, the Spider-Girls, for quite some time. It's, it's, it's been on my, it was on my watch list last year. So it's been sitting, it's been sitting there. Uh, for a long time and then recently I heard that you know some people actually bought it I actually recommended it to a friend he never bought it but this is a game of deal or flip side so um, guys it's a tough one because it's it's with a decal or decal I'm gonna go with Wu-Tang and, decal uh, <laughs> and then, yeah you know I'm I'm a big fan of Jeff decal <laughs> but at the same time I know that J, um, J, uh, J. Scott Campbell is just like money, you know, that's just so liquid and, you know, I could move his books faster. Although I, I'm not a fan of this amazing Spider-Man um, 607. Um, I don't know anything about both books. I don't even know anything about Spider-Girls, although that that cover is pretty fire. Um, overall, I would want that. I would want the Spider-Girls uh variant uh in my pc but you know i don't know for an easy sell easy flip uh i'm gonna go with uh the 9.6 uh j scott's campbell uh decal's fine growing on me you know uh in, enjoy the work you know we know our friend who's been uh letting us know more of the covers and stuff like that so i do like i do like decal um yeah i'm very i'm i'm, I'm partial to 9.8 for sure yeah, as an older member of the crew, my, my boy JSC over there, we've been um, people pulling those out of bins and doing well with them years and years ago. And they've, I mean, they've disappeared. You know, we, we can see, may, you know, maybe a little different some of our ages. To, to me, the 606, 607, the 601, uh, sort of uh, uh, iconic JSC Spidey covers to me that weren't during the, uh, <clears throat> the, re, the reboot, as you would say um from uh from spider-man before that so um i love this jsc i love this black cat um black cat is one of the characters that he draws the best uh some of my, my favorite covers of his actually aren't aren't even female i like the uh the, the wolverine variant and i like uh the 688 variant for the lizard that he's done are probably probably my two favorite my two favorite covers um but to, to me this is iconic this is jsc uh i love I love the way that he put it together. <clears throat> I love this little run, um, and I, I've always I always like JSC on Spider Man. So even I'm uh, I'm taking the nine six over the nine eight this week. Can I get to phone a friend? No. So <laughs> my my take on this, I actually had the Spider Girls. I bought it. I pre ordered it raw when it came out. I am a big fan of Jeff DeCall, DeCal, however you want. I said DeCall, but. I also like the J. Scott Campbell. The J. Scott Campbell is kind of a classic cover. I wouldn't, as Samson said, J. Scott Campbell kind of carries a bigger, um, it's like at, like Adam Hughes, you hear that name and it just kind of, it's easy money to sell. Now on the other hand with that Jeff DeCall, I do like that Spider Girls variant because we got Spider-Verse coming. Jeff DeCall is a rising name. We saw that with the Josh Middleton Batgirl variant that came out. As soon as that started rising in value, people started buying up all these other Josh Middleton variants and that started seeing price jumps. That's something that's killing the children to call variant right now, selling raw for like 200 something dollars. So I don't know if it's gonna carry that across all of his other titles and then mix in the Spider-Verse movie coming up, the popularity of these female characters. 
All it takes is some type of MCU animated rumor, and that could see another bump. Having said that, I like the classic J. Scott Campbell cat, <laughs> Black Cat as well. And he just posted on social how he's been doing all these homage covers to his classic <clears throat> covers with the Mary Jane cover. This was one of them. And then you started seeing more sales just after that post as well. So I'm going to keep the 9-6 and then, is that what it is? Keep one, sell one? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you only get one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, going with, I'm going with the J. Scott Campbell. Cool. Yeah, that Spider Girl is one. I think his name is pronounced Deckel. I, I think Deckel. I've heard that. Um, yeah. But did I'm you all? I'm record. I say names wrong all the time. <laughs> I'm the Wu Tang voice. That's all I'm saying. I'm the Wu Tang voice. You know, I was doing research on the Spider Girls one last year because Deckel was was super hot with uh, Something's Killing the Children, right? That super hot variant. And um, he was on the interview. And I believe he said this this cover specifically, he was inspired by pole dancing, which is like, <laughs> like it looks like, like it. I could, yeah, I mean, who is it? Yeah, yeah, who is it? They get splits and can you yeah. imagine who who the one is that's doing the uh, the hardest technique, right? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just because of that alone, I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta get this. Um, show show girls right here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, the Spider Girls one's really fun. But man, I mean, uh, limited supply. I know it's been it's kind of held value. Um, I think it maybe went like close to like seventy five hundred bucks raw last year. Um, but also that ASM one uh, six oh seven. It's super classic. Black Cat's already hitting. Like try getting an ASM um, one ninety four right now for cheap. You can't. It's gone. Um, with that charity thing and uh, Joe going over my shoulder, tell him like tell you so about you know that six oh six. Sure, who voted it in last week? <laughs> Oh man, we missed that one. <laughs> oh man, I wish I got top fifteen at least. But yeah, I'm going with my homies here for, and uh, you know, I I'm I'm selling for now. I'm buying and selling for now. Hopefully, I can I can flip a six oh seven for two hundred bucks before fees. Uh, yeah, the momentum's good on that one. So um, I do like to, to call Deckel uh, for just a little bit long-term hold that could go up, go to 250, I think, but I'm buying the flip right now. For, and final answer, ASM 607. I guess uh, I'm the wrong person to ask about this you because are. if uh, <laughs> ASM, if ASM 607 is going up against Da Vinci, I'm picking 607, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Uh, I, I think Victoria's Secret missed an opportunity to uh, sell these onesies, uh, you know, and do a collab. And, you know, I, I mean, this cover is uh, and, and I think Big Legs, you know, said it best. It's iconic uh, to me. It's not even close. And I know DeCall is he's up and coming. And uh, but but these two, in my opinion, you can't even compete. And just look at the bids. I mean, you got one bid on the Spider Girls, and and you got eleven bids on a nine six. So, I mean that that ought to tell you something. So, final answer: um, ASM six oh seven. Did they do a Lamo variant for six oh seven? So there is a Mexico variant a Lamo of six oh seven. No six oh seven. Yeah. So um, before I make a choice. Uh, would it change anyone's mind to know that for Spider Girls number one, there's only 31 at a 9.8 with a total of 35 graded? And for the uh, ASM 607, there's 703 9.8s, 484 9.6s with a total of 1,704 uh, graded. Yeah. Um, I mean, it took 20. It what 20 25 years jc's been at this like that 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 cover's been selling for years on top of years yeah. on top of years so no nah, it doesn't doesn't change yeah. my mind there's yeah, still 300s out there yeah yeah 
Yeah, so I know, and and it just dude, like it's fun. Like I like honestly, the Spider Girls is fine to me. It's not, it's not iconic. It's not going down in history. It's just it's cool, yeah. and there's not quite as many of them. But that's not that's not a reason to um to <laughs> to pay. I the one one t- one ten plus you know the fourteen bucks shipping. So uh, you know one hundred twenty four bucks for that book is it, that's that's a good pr- that's a good starting price. And I think Phil said probably you know um, you know two fifty is a better price, but um, considering the things that we've been seeing in this world, I I, I can easily see six oh seven, uh, nine six at uh, two fifty any day. Uh, yeah. Plus, plus Sean, you know Sean's like I see it. I look up the greatest notes, get that, press it, make a nine eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't like the the notes cost too much, man. I like I just I, hey man, just have, get better scan, please. <laughs> you know what I mean? But oh. well, like I like I tell buyers, they go, oh, do you think this is a nine point eight? You know the easiest way to get a nine point eight? Buy a nine point eight. <laughs> like that. Yes. Just, you want a nine point eight? <laughs> Sell it out, buddy. <laughs> Well, I also think it will depend a lot to see how the Silk series does. Um, And then even into the Spider-Verse 2, like, what that builds on also. So, I mean, Spider-Girls 1 is definitely a longer play to to do, but ASM 607 right now is so liquid because of all the the attention that's been brought up. But at the same time, how many of us were talking about the amazing Spider-Man, J. Scott Campbell's, right before that happened. Yeah, I mean, is, is, there, yeah. is there any is there any first appearances in this in that issue? The Spider Girls are there? Those what is it? Is just, it a key issue or? I think it's just them three for the first time teaming up. I think. Uh, what I think. Yeah, because I knew that I knew how the census was pretty low, but then you know, nobody really knows about it. <laughs> nobody really yeah. talks about it, so I don't know. I wouldn't invest in it. So we have the um, Celebrate Stan Lee Marvel exclusive that I believe was given out to Marvel employees at New York City Comic Con versus the uh, Marvel Comics 1000 D23 variant book. Man, this you you really got you got this one, Aaron. <laughs> Jeez, man, how are you going to do this to us? That's that's what I do best, right? <laughs> uh, Joe, you want to kick it off? Yeah, so it, it's Mickey Mouse versus Stan Lee. So, <laughs> you know, I got to go with Stan the man. You know, I like Mickey Mouse, but uh, but I'm going with the old man. Uh, final answer. All right, yeah. Um, what scared me about some of these Disney covers is that um, a, lot of them been, a lot of them have been available, like in the secondary market. Um, that Scrooge one, that Del Auto one, I think it's Del Auto. And um, it just seems like more and more of those have been pumping out. And I'd rather go for the more scare. I, I feel like the Stan Lee one is a lot more scarce. Um, and I think maybe a little bit harder to get in higher grade from what I've heard from other dealers. So I'd go with uh, Stan Lee too. Now, this is one that was given out of that D23 uh, summit also. But weren't some of the stores getting them like one per store? I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah, they, they were. were. But yeah, they were. I mean, there's no doubt for me. Anyone that knows me, I'm a huge Disney fan. Have Disney Vacation Club, go to Disney World, love Disney movies, love Disney Plus. So when this first came out and was watching D23 and I heard about this book, I was frustrated because I didn't know how to get a copy. Ended up picking the nine point eight up shortly after. But personal, just my uh, nostalgia. It's it's an I mean. The Stan Lee could be $2 million and I'd still go with the D23 just because it's D- Disney and Mickey. Following up, uh, following up Brian with uh, follow, with following the mouse. Not not as big a not as big a Disney fan, but as part of a, a family that are. Um, they know <laughs> they know they they go to Disneyland with their annual passes on Tuesday and Wednesday, and we get these passes on the base um, uh, from Grandpa Tony. And uh you know they they'd show up and uh, they they do land days. They know they know leave Uncle Sean at home because he doesn't give as uh, as much of, as much of a crap. But I I do understand the iconicness of of the Disney and the collaboration of this being <clears throat> the 
the the mouse and Marvel joining together. I think this collaborates and uh, represents a point in history that completely like it exists. Yeah. And um, I I even I think I I sold along with the a friend of ours, Heartless, who got his hands on a copy of the of the sketch variant or the black and white variant. And uh, did, did uh, I think they uh, see Belusky gave away twenty five of those things, and one of the fans liked money more, and so uh, did, did did well uh, re resold that thing. Um, I think that's a that's a great book. Um, I know that the Marvel celebrate Stan Lee is a great thing, and I know it's an important event, but um, in the history of our lives and of uh, our kids' lives or people that have children like normal people of my age have like uh i think the uh the d23 variant will be something sought sought after to commemorate an event that happened that was like a really big deal in in pop culture and history and movies and things going like that so i'm i'm, I'm rolling d23 for the long term do respect the stand book uh wish i had one but de uh definitely i'm going with disney on this one yeah i mean Absolutely, Sean and Brian. This one's gonna break my heart because you know I'm, I'm I love Stan Lee and I love this cover. Um, but you know, this is a game of uh, deal or flip side, and um, I always look at the old versus the new. And um, you know, I think the D twenty three that's the future right there. And um, I think I'm gonna go with the younger money. You know, the younger money says Mickey Mouse, and I'm I'm I really I'm really looking forward to seeing like you know some, hopefully a crossover between Marvel and Disney. Although the Stan Lee, you know, it just rings a bell like I have to have it. But there's so many different other covers of Stan Lee to choose for from. Yeah, I still got to go with the Mickey Mouse because I think I can. I, I mean, that's just so desirable. And as soon as it came out, although it was kind of, you know, it was, it was still sitting there, but now I think it's more popular than ever. Um, I'm surprised I'm still actually still seeing that number of four, $430. $430. But uh, I, I'm going to go with uh, Mickey Mouse over Stanley. Final answer. So the only thing that scares me about the uh, Marvel Comics 1000 was, I think, shortly after the convention, like someone had like that huge pile of those of the book, and you know, I mean, it didn't really affect the price that much, um, as we can see. And correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this the first Marvel comics with Mickey Mouse on the cover? Yeah, it is. I believe so. Uh, and then the other on the other side, the Stan Lee book that was only given out to Marvel employees or anyone that attended that panel, and I, I believe they, uh, if any of them were caught selling it, like on eBay or whatever, they could be fired for selling it. Wow. Yeah. What's the print run on that on that Stan Lee? That was a that was a New York um, exclusive, right? Because I know you, you had to go to. What do you gotta go to? Uh, what's that? I forget that. It was like an employee event exclusive, right? Yeah, I think Something. it was. Yeah. yeah, or if you had like employee a certain and, ad, yeah, or like that. connection yeah. to to like Marvel somehow or whatever. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So it was, it was a radio. It was at radio radio uh, music hall. I think that's where it was at. Oh, was it? Yeah, I believe so. Because I was trying to get tickets. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this is like this is um, 2020. Or 2019? What is this? I forget. I, I, I always mix I, them up. I think it's 2019. Yeah, 2019. Yeah, that was the Radio City Music Hall. Yeah, ain't okay. shit happened in 2020. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah. got a virtual PDF. <laughs> yeah, just to, just assume it didn't happen in 2020. Yeah, yeah they actually aired, I think <laughs> nothing they aired, did. They, they aired that show on ABC, I believe. Yeah, it was a very so, emotional event. So. I kind of so, have one more thing about the D23 book. Something to also make, make note of is, you know, Disneyland's just now opening up. Being a Disney fan, within this summer, Disneyland is also launching that Avengers Campus, that huge new Marvel, so kind of like Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Now they're doing their Marvel launch. If nice. that gains a lot of popularity, not only do you get the comic book fans, but then you get the Disney fans come in Marvel fans, might go into comic books, and then that, you know, might add a little bit more hype to Disney mixed with Avengers. 
I mean, it's far fetching, but you never know. Some Disney fans are crazy, and I can I can vouch for it. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. a crazy one too. <laughs> <laughs> um, despite all, e- even if the Disney fans are crazy and stuff like that, I'm gonna have to go with the Stan Lee book, and just uh, you know. Maybe an employee got fired from me buying this book, so hopefully they can find a new job. <laughs> but yeah, all right, let's move on to our next set of books. So we have the uh, Spawn number two thirty, the black and white variant, versus Spawn one seventy four, the first appearance of Gunslinger Spawn. Oh look, we have a new contestant. Let's start off with Tony. Welcome into the. Hey, what's up, Tony? Yeah. Oh. Shout out to Cannon, go! Throw, throw me right <laughs> in the wolves. Okay, oh, 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 yeah. oh let's see. Um, <laughs> you got to marry one, one kill one. Okay. <laughs> Brian! <laughs> Brian, what's going on, man? What's going yeah, on? so we just started on the, uh, the our next set of books. So this is uh, spawn number 230 versus spawn number 174. All right. Um, I am going just pure aesthetics. I think they probably have about the same, I don't know, I, around the same spec value long term. Um, I like I like that we're branching off and doing the Spawn universe, so I would probably lean toward the Gunslinger. I've never been a huge fan of sketch variants, and plus it's, it's I mean, it's an homage to a great cover, but it is just an homage to the, the McFarlane, uh, to the... the, the, the Batman cover. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm gonna go first appearance of Gunslinger. It's awesome cover, and I, you know, the sky's the limit if this if this Spawn universe really pops off. If if the popularity comes, it could be way bigger than than we can imagine. So I'm going with that. Um, I'm going with the the five star rating. You know. That means I'm going to get my book shipped to me in, in great condition. Uh, it's going to come uh, packaged properly. It's going to get to my house pretty quickly. Now, uh, that that McFarlane one, uh, that would look so nice next to my Batman, you know? I, I guess it, it, it's uh, there's a lot of hype on, on the Gunslinger, but I just like that iconic spawn, um, you know, with the the big cloak and you know i guess it's more uh more of a fan thing than 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 flippability course you look at the bidding and there's 40 bids on that one and and only 18 on the other so i i i guess i'll i'll go with uh uh spawn 230 over 174 final answer yeah i'm going to i'm going to go with uh what tony says you know i'm not really a big fan of of uh sketch variants um i don't know i always every time i see a sketch variant i just want to i just want to color it in <laughs> myself i just I always think they're like coloring books That's but, uh, them, right That's <laughs> yeah. well yeah th- isn't that what dc was promoting like when they were doing all those uh sketch variants for or for the new 52 that really? was, uh, yeah uh, that they're yeah. like coloring your own yeah adult I coloring mean, books <laughs> okay. Well, how come we? How come we never done One. that? <laughs> All right. Because uh, no one this... wants screen labels. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got something in mind for uh, a particular book, but um, um, no, I'm not, I'm you know with something like this, I'm gonna go with the guts. Um, homages. They they have like for me, I always think they have like a little uh, short window on them. Uh, they're hot for I don't know two weeks and then you forget about them but for uh first appearances you know they win always win at the end um i know the gunslinger spawn is, is a uh, very low print uh most of those books were kind of you know damaged or you know um so i'm gonna go with the uh with the spawn 174 because i know that it has room to grow and i know it's going to be more desirable if this uh, Spawn universe pops off, final answer. Mine's going to be quick. <laughs> but I kind of agree with Tony. One, um, I'm, I've never been a big fan of sketch brands, too. I remember first getting back into comic collecting, I kept wondering why the sketch brands cost so much more money than, than color. It was like half the work. <laughs> but um, I, And I agree with everyone else's comments where 
Gunslinger first appearance. Gunslinger seems that's always been a popular cover. Um, and kicking off with, with Green with Tony again with that, that Spawn universe coming up, you, you never know. It's just, if, if I were to pick one, it would just be the Gunslinger one. <clears throat> so this whole, I remember walking around comic shops when this uh, whole Spawn uh, homage run was going in, and I thought they were pretty cool looking. And I grabbed one of each, and I was like, you know, this is pretty cool. So for about a year or so, they did something like 10 or 12 of these things, and then they do the one in 25s. And, uh, I mean, I, th I think it started with, like, the uh, uh, Obama and uh, Mitt Romney's, and <laughs> or at least that did the uh, – the homage from uh, the Watchmen, and I don't think it actually did start. That was a couple in, but um. So anyway, there's about 12 issues of these, and all I've been watching them do is climb and climb and climb all over the years. Um, sell, sell them with our buddies Dino and Scott and Tony. Um, we were in uh, Baltimore probably three years ago, four years ago, and I said just walk over wherever you can, I'll buy every single copy. By like someday they said, who are the guys that have bought every single copy of these fun homages off every wall and off every back bin in this? And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, we know we know those dudes. And Spawn had a fairly low print run from about two. I mean, from before that, from before that. I mean, comics had lower print runs at this time anyway. So um, um, 218, 19, 220, 220 is a young blood. I had a couple of 229. I mean, I just sold a color 229 for 100 bucks uh, yesterday. And then uh, what was another? And uh, sold the 226, which is the Violator, looking like Wolverine, sort of homage for a hundred for 140 uh, a few days ago. These, these sketches don't come up that often. Um, the ones that I've had, I've regret I've regret solding them. When Matt first came out with the uh, top 100 variants of all time, about 30 or 40 of them were Spawn variants. And most of these weren't on the list yet, but they got there. Um, I'm taking for longevity. Uh, anything McFarlane's done and anything, even though they're homages from an iconic homage run that people are actually trying to complete the sets of, uh, whether or not it's the color set or whether or not it's the sketch set, if you find any of those homages, just go ahead and pick them up because you should. And you're not going to find the sketch ones. They don't exist. A gunslinger might be cool one of these days. I don't know, but I'm going with uh, McFarlane doing his doing his own, and with this sketch that is uh, pretty freaking pretty fairly rare. All those one in twenty five sketches were for for all those covers that they redid. So I'm 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 going uh, I'm going the sketch two thirty for sure. That's just so you can color it in yourself, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I give it to give it to my niece. She's really good at coloring her manga. So, so um, here's a little story I'll share. When the whole comic market crashed, and I was just looking for low hanging fruit, I just went all in on like these spawn runs in the two hundreds. And uh, when the market started back up again, man, I made a killing. Like I sent every single like nine four and up to cgc and i was just making so much money off of spawn um i was there uh at new york comic-con um for the spawn 300 uh gold and silver and i just saw the lines just like people so excited about the upcoming spawn movie it was crazy like like they even had the spawn egg toys that people were like getting signed and like Man, it was nuts. That said, uh, the Batman 2 uh, 423 homage is still going up in value, you know? So that plus the sketch on this 230 for Spawn, and they're really hard to get. They have, like, a lot of, like, these tears on them. Probably Sean can attest to how fucked up these can be, you know? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Um I got it. I got to go with a book that could be listed for a Tim Walker price, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and like I could list it for like 200 bucks raw and maybe I get 1500. So, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, that Swan 230 sketch is a winner. I love it. Um, I'm going with that one for sure. Yeah. So I have a short story also. Um, so I used to have a Spawn 174 
and I sold it probably way too early before any of the you know Spawn Universe announcement stuff. But I still sold it like way more than I got it for. Uh, you know, easily doubling my money and buying something else. But still, like to see, I will say this though, I it sold for less than its raw copy. So take that into consideration. Profit, and, profit, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I yeah, I can't complain. I made profit. I'm happy. Um, and I do collect homage covers. Uh, so and uh, I bought all the spawn like what it starts at two twenty and goes all the way up to. 230 something somewhere in that range mm -hmm. um and so i've completed a set of the, all the colors and sean's right like even when the prices were low you cannot find those sketch ones at all um i think i've only seen the 227 which is like the homage to asm 300 um and well i guess with the the uh, sketch one it's a red background and it's like i guess closer to like 301 yeah, I've only seen that once, like in a signature series, like at a, at a local comic shop. I don't even remember how much they were asking for, but I just knew it was like too ridiculous. So I'm gonna have to go with the Spawn 230 because you know 423, it's finally getting the attention it deserves, and you know Spawn's getting a lot more attention too. Yeah, there's and yeah. there's like 15 gunslingers on eBay right now. There's one of the sketch for for about 1200. And and expect to see more of the gunslingers before you don't see the two thirties. I mean, there's, I mean, we've all known about one seventy four for a long time, but never knew that it was going to be worth so much that you had to bother to list to sell it at this price. So you know, there's a lot of people digging them out of their boxes right now. Nobody's digging two thirty sketch variant. I mean, yeah. maybe a few people, but not, but not the same, not to the to the level of one seventy four digging them out of the boxes. It's just it's not going to happen, man. Yeah. Well, I, I will say this also. Um, I know for sure that both of these time periods of Spawn are low print count runs. So, yeah, absolutely yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. And I also say that there is also foreign collectors of Spawn. Like you see a lot of the German variants. So there's people flying from Europe, going to cons, looking for these books, or getting these signed by McFarlane or. And just stash them in the collection. So, uh, yeah, that 230 is super rare. All right. So, this next set of books is from Nico. So, we have uh, DC Action Comics number 242, the first appearance of Brainiac, and versus uh, Tales of Suspense number 57. The Action Comics is at a 2.5, and the Tales of Suspense is at a 5.0. So, a DC versus Marvel. Both first appearances. Who wants to kick us off? <laughs> I'll go first just because it'll be simple for me. Just I, I'm going with Action Comics just because I, I think Brainiac has more episodes than than, uh, than Hawkeye, and it's crazy to be honest. I had no idea that that five was going for that much because I bought a raw right when the Avengers was about to come out for like at the, at the time I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm spending this much on a comic, and it was like two hundred bucks instead of then, <laughs> and yeah, and it came back a four or five. So I'm glad a five O sold for that much. That being said, I'm I'm going Brainiac all day just because I'm I'm usually more of a Marvel fan than DC outside of like Green Lantern and Batman. Uh, but yeah, Brainiac to me, it seems like Hawkeye's kind of hit that upward swing from the MCU. Still an iconic first appearance, but I think we have a lot more to see from the DC universe, and especially Brainiac if, if Warner Brothers can just get their shit together and, and create decent movies and not mess it up. I sold my TOS 57. <clears throat> I had a 6.5, and it's one of those, you thought, oh, you can upgrade, and they come and go, because um, they were, there were more of them. Um, it, it, it shows on walls back in the day. I mean, it walls on shows. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so um, I, I was a little more, uh, you know, always appreciated that. I always thought, you know, it's a great first appearance considering there's four pictures of him on the cover. Uh, and it, going in there with Iron Man, I love that Tells of Suspense run. Like so many, you know, iconic covers. It's not, you know, it's only a couple years or whatever it is or three years or something after, uh, after Iron Man's first appearance. Um, you know, we've got uh, and even later stuff with the Black Widows with the way – like that, what a, what a great uh, set of, of a Marvel run it is. Um, I don't disagree with Brian at all, 
that uh, Brainiac could have uh, an, an upward projection. Um, the Action Comics in a 2.5, honestly, um, seeing as where uh, DC things have been and, uh, you know, the difference in the years. That looks like a bright color copy, although I, I can't see it that much from here. Um, you you think, uh, so that 2.5 is about equivalent to that Marvel 5.0. At that era so I, I sort of believe in, i sort of believe in that i'd still i'd still might be remorse but i i'd still lean on hawkeye um just because he he's done a lot he's always going to be part of the mcu he's always been a big player uh you know so uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna lean hawkeye but this this is definitely as close to a tie that's been up there since we got here yeah i think that tos 57 is going to be like a timing cell like uh, so the Hawkeye series, I think, is in October this year. I think. Um, so, I think it's is it November? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, yeah, it's just got to be a good timing. So, like, like I think that that book could, you might be able to get 80, 1800 out of it. It's a hard book to get. Okay, that's first rate. episode. And Kate Bishop takes over. <laughs> that would suck. Uh, we thought it was gonna die, right? At the la in the last movie, that Action Comics two forty two. Everyone wants that book. Like any person that has grown up with comics wants that book, and it, they're they're always trying to get it or snipe it at a cheap price. And it that looks that's awesome that it's gone up. Like yeah. I felt like that book has always been like five hundred, six hundred bucks. And like GD plus or presentable low grade, uh, oh, but yeah, that's a tough, tough, tough decision. Um, but I'm a vendor TOS fifty seven. Yeah, maybe I can catch that small little window and sell it really quick. But that Action Comics two forty two, man, I, man, that's like probably like a first Mister Freeze. You know what I mean? Like it's that big of a book. So for this one, I'm gonna be a put my collector's hat on, and do the action 242. No regrets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I'm gonna actually. I don't. I don't like either of these books and any of these characters. Sorry to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean Hawkeye. I, I would. I don't. I mean, just get. I mean, just. Oh, and then you got Superman, Brainiac. I'll make it easier for myself. I'll just buy the Superman and sell it right away. That's it, my final answer. Send so your I, complaints I, about these <laughs> these books to Nico. So, I, I would <laughs> say, you know, honestly, I'm kind of like with Phil on um, if you want to make uh, five, six hundred bucks very easily, uh, you spend a grand and wait for the show to come out, you list it. And it's a done deal. Like, I the Brainiac comic is pretty cool, but I think about that Kevin Smith uh, story that he tells with uh, Brainiac, and and uh, he was uh, told to write the story. And what is it? Uh, who killed the Who killed the death of Superman? The the documentary is that what it was? And it was the whole deal with them trying to get Brainiac into the movie with uh, Nicolas Cage, and it was just so so uh so stupid you know and so i can't get that out of my head um i'm I'm sure for a collector you know it's a first appearance and and that's what's really moving right now but you also got to look from a flippage flippage standpoint um the first appearance of a hawkeye right before the show i mean that's that's an automatic sell man final answer tells the suspense 57. all right yeah i I uh, I guess pros and cons as quick as I can here. I I'm not uh, I'm not a huge DC speculation guy, but a lot of people aren't right now. Um, I like the cover on the the Action Comics 242. I like it better. I like the purple, just the design of it. I like the fact that it's eight years older. Um. And obviously the first appearance of a character that you know was famous when all of us were before all of us were born is a is a is a plus 
And I like the fact that in this merger, we're hearing rumors that that whoever's what is it, Discovery or whatever company's taken over the IP. Yeah, we're going to be in charge of content. Yeah, that they're it, they've at least gone on record saying that they're going to be spending more on content than Netflix, which is insane. Uh, but if that's true, that that uh, it bodes well for DC and, and the DC properties. But I'm going to go with Tales of Suspense 70 or 57 because not because I love Hawkeye. I, I don't like him. He's all right. Whatever. Um, Hawkeye, Hawkeye, the character Hawkeye represents the power of the MCU because Hawkeye was never an A-list Avenger. Hawkeye was not the he Hawkeye never had an ongoing series. I think he had a mini series back yeah. in the like, 80s. It was a mini series. And he had to roll with Dove. Yeah. He got relegated to West Coast Avengers. The Matt like, Fraction there, series was good. Yeah, but and that it that came out around when the MCU started. Not that that launched him or anything, but yes, that series was awesome. Um, and I'm glad that that's the one that they're that they're pulling from from this new series. But the fact that that Hawkeye is this globally, you know, cultural character that everyone knows. My grandma knows who Hawkeye is. It just tells you how powerful these movies and these TV shows are coming from Marvel. That they can take. Sure, you talking about Mash? Cares about. You know. <laughs> They they could have they could have skipped Hawkeye. They could have picked they could have gone with Mockingbird. I mean, she doesn't have quite this as long a history, but she's been with the team for you know similar skill set. No people one thought they were. Right. I think people thought they were. That number ninety five or whatever was just like sought after at cons for like two years. Yeah, yeah. If if they had, it now it would be, you know, Mockingbird that would be going on her third continuing series. And it's just it's very the MCU is just too powerful to to deny when you're speculating. So if I'm going between these, I'm going with Tales of Suspense fifty seven. That new series should be awesome. Kate Bishop should be awesome. Uh, Renner solid. I'm going with that. To me, like I guess when I got back into comics, um, I remember that like X Men was like X Men number one in particular was is what comes to mind was right about approaching. Um, like a grand a point or so. And so DC keys were always like king, I guess, you know, like DC keys are DC keys. And to me, a lot of the old school collectors or just collectors of older books will always gravitate towards DC books. And so I could see a potential upswing eventually if, you know, DC starts producing good content. So I say go ahead and buy the Brainiac first appearance, you know, action comics, um, you know, but if you're just looking to like do a quick flip, like go for the Tesla suspense 57, you know, uh, especially since like, if you have the money and you can spend it and then just, but if you're looking to like a long-term play, I think the action comics would be a better play to do. And our last set of books is also from Nico. We have an amazing Spider-Man number 50 graded at a five, five, First appearance of Kingpin versus Marvel Spotlight number two, Origin and first appearance of uh, Werewolf by Night. Jack, this is, a, this is a good one. I don't have a big stake in either one of these. I, I, like Spider Man is a title. Obviously, Kingpin is, you know, one of the most iconic Spidey villains out there. One one kind of rule that I have if I'm if I'm balancing between a hero and a villain, I'm. Even if it's a lesser known hero, I'm I'm probably gonna go with the the protagonist instead of the antagonist. So I'm gonna go Marvel Spotlight number two. Who knows when we would ever get to Werewolf by Night in on screen? But regardless, you know if it's uh, yeah, I'm going Marvel Spotlight two. Uh, does that Amazing Spider-Man have white pages? Uh, so the ASM fifty is off white to white pages. You, you know, I just uh, you never know. They could bring back Vin, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio for the next Spider Man movie. I hope they Cause, do because in in the comics when Spidey's identity was revealed, he was on the run. You remember the Back in Black series? He he was on the run, 
And uh, once uh, Kingpin found out uh, who he was, didn't he go beat the shit out of Aunt May or something? And he got pissed off. I mean, that could be in play that you could see uh, him in one of these movies and that'll jack up the price of ASM 50. But it, it's such a classic cover, too. And the story is such a classic uh classic story you know he gives up being spider-man and and the red the red cover i mean it's just a iconic cover for me if i didn't have it i would buy it and uh it, it would just be uh part of the pc but um werewolf i mean uh, the marvel spotlight's got so much upside i don't know it, i mean it's uh if, if i gotta pick right now i'm picking asm 50. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. I don't know when I when I look at these two books. I uh, I think the the standout obviously for me is um, the ASM fifty. Um, it's just it's just too iconic. There's so many homages. Um, the Marvel Spotlight. Like the only thing that comes that rings a bell in my head is Moon Knight. Like <laughs> like. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, I. So if I were to, if I were to, if I were to um, pick or choose, I would go um, ASM um, fifty because I think long term, short term, I think it's just an easy sell. Uh, it's a great hold. You got the first appearance of Kingpin. Um, it's just a. It's a very very great book to have all around so even i mean what is it i don't i can care less about the the white pages and um a 5.5 isn't that ba bad of a grade either i mean so i'm gonna go with asm because i, I don't mean this the marvel spotlight i just think it's kind of like a hit or miss like when you know you gotta you gotta like hold on to it i don't know i mean the bits don't show it but I don't know. I just think that it, I just think that the Spider Man is always going to be there. So Spider Man fifty for me. So I feel like the Marvel Spotlight two right now has it's been underappreciated for quite a long time, big time. Like real comic book fans really like that book. It's kind of the buying behavior is kind of following the uh, Werewolf, Werewolf by Night thirty two. Um, the first appearance of Moon Knight, but I feel like this book has gone way out of hand. Um, I feel like some people, to be honest, are buying this book, and they they think that Werewolf by Night is showing up, but it's. I mean, I don't see anywhere that it's it's for sure. Um, don't they just have like a new Werewolf by Night miniseries that came out from Marvel too? Yeah, yeah. there was yeah. a miniseries, yeah. and it's that's that's a different Werewolf by Night. Yeah. With, with the mean, Plug One One Hundred variant, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, people got excited about it. They thought the series was all right. Um, people, I've seen people invest in it, and uh, I see nothing wrong with that that character. But I mean, at twelve hundred twenty five bucks, are people serious? Like this is, mm -hmm. this is a lot of money um, for this book. I, I just, I just don't see the investability on just. Um, on just just mere spec, uh, Ethan Hawke. There was a, a leak that he was on set in a brown suit and a walking cane. I mean, people say Dracula. Some people say Sun King. Early on, people thought, "Oh, it's going to be Werewolf by Night that he's going to play." Uh, but uh, you also got the competing notion that Man Wolf could be showing up. Okay, so. How is that going to work out? And ASM 124 is spiking. I think it's 124. That's his first appearance. That one's spiking. So, I mean, who's going to show up first? And then you have Kingpin. And I think the actor has said on, on, on record that he wants to come back and play that role. So Punisher... John Barenthal coming back, Kingpin coming back, Daredevil coming back. I mean, you got to go with ASM 50 
and just ride that ASM vintage train because I think they're. 1300 is too ch is cheap for that book in in five five i'll fight to white pages <laughs> so i definitely will put my money on the more sure thing and go with the first appearance of kingpin asm fifty five five. well i was gonna say um this one i, I don't like the price for the marvel spotlight i agree i kind of agree with with phil on that but at the same time I think, especially Bronze Age horror in general, is just kind of underrated. Um, yeah, I, we saw how crazy people went for Night Nurse when Rosario Dawson was was cast for Daredevil, and um, those books went crazy. Of course, they've kind of come back down again. But I kind of I, I agree with a lot of the points you're saying, but I also want to like put my chips in and kind of bet on it because oh, if they create, if somehow we get. A, a Marvel monster universe that gets created and you get the whole tomb of Dracula and the werewolf by night yeah. or something spins out of that upcoming moon night that we got coming. Um, who knows? And I just think this as a classic book for me that a lot of attention is given to Kingpin and, and that like, it's almost like the opposite from the very first pick. I'm going with the opposite of the iconic cover here just because I think, yes, that price is high, but I'm willing to risk it right now because I think, I'm a big horror fan. I think horror comics are coming back right now. We're seeing a lot with indie books. If the Marvel can catch some of that that residual heat and, and, and create something with it, especially when everyone specs from not just a comic book standpoint, but everyone's talking about option, movie, MCU, Disney Plus, that's the hot buzz. I think if Marvel can get a Kevin Feige type person to create a Marvel monster universe, this book could rise more. Wow, that's a great point, Brian. Is, it, is that me? That's you. So Kingpin. I got my dog up. He's over here. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, do you guys like my uh, like real to comic book Jack Russell mask? Um, so clearly, I'm going with the Kingpin. And uh, <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me, man! Name an, name another horror book or anything with a first appearance that doesn't have a nine point eight besides Marvel Spotlight two. Not one, right? There's not one. There's two nine point sixes, a handful of nine point fours, which I broke a GPA record buying one for eight hundred bucks back in the day. Um, this is, <laughs> dude. Werewolf comics are iconic. They've been great. Werewolf comics are crossover. Everything that Brian just said about the possibility of the monsters in the, in the MCU. How about Marvel Premiere twenty eight? It's two thousand dollar, two thousand dollar nine eight. If it's not three by now, I have no idea. I have no idea. And that's you know that's with Werewolf, Ghost Rider, Man Thing, and Morbius on the cover. We're already gonna get a Morbius movie. You're already gonna get it. We've already had Fat Fisk in the goddamn show. And you know this is this is where it lands. This is where it lands. Yeah, cool, iconic. Yeah, it's Spider Man. He looks all sad and shit. You know, whatever, man. Just walking around. Right? They tell the origin story on the motherfucking cover. Right? Oh, uh, poor Spidey. Oh, he's a teenager. And God, was he all emo? Nineteen. God, whatever year is it? So, uh, yeah, dude, we're going with. Uh, I'm going with the werewolf. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of potential. You can't press that book. You can't get a higher grade. Eight point five is a is a very is a very high grade for that book. And eight point five is I I would I would venture to bet there's a whole lot more eight point fives in Spidey fifty. Even though this is a five five, and I realize that there's a difference, uh, then you can even see in this Marvel Spotlight too with the square bound book that's impossible to press. Um, so uh, yeah. I think um, I know that the, the new stuff uh, what wasn't Jack Russell. Um, I think honestly they should move on from the Jack Russell name because it's more known for a dog on Fraser than it is for the name of a werewolf these days. So uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, dude, I'm I'm dude, I'm straight rolling with all like with, with all the books in my room. With uh, even yeah, even John sent me a new one today. Thank you. And the backside is a, a Ghost Rider one or uh, Marvel Spotlight Five. Excuse me. So uh, yes. yeah, the Marvel, Marvel Spotlight series, man, great to invest in. Some a lot of first appearances, and yeah, Werewolf did didn't make waves, but it's now finally making waves and is finally you know moving on. You know, some of us were were offended at, to a degree that uh, like like our friend Samson up here said about it being uh, known for the uh, first Moon Knight appearance and stuff in the series. Now the book is worth more. I get it. I the get Marvel it. Marvel Twilight. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> Marvel Twilight. <laughs> so anyway, uh, um, you you can't you can't pick my favorite book of all time and me choose a different one. So <laughs> I'm going Marvel Spotlight to friggin' final answer. I had no idea you felt that way about it. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett, did you know this? Brian has a lot of interest for all. McCaller, Miss Callister masks and more, by the way. He sells Morbius and Man Thing and like all kinds of stuff. And this is his like real estate. He sells the masks. This is like the wall hanging one. And it's going to go back there with some comics. So anyway, I don't know if you guys saw me stop my camera to go pick this off the shelf or not. But anyway, that's what I did once this book came up. So yeah, Marvel Spotlight. Sneaky. Yeah, Sneaky. so that, that's uh, that's my pick too. Marvel Spotlight number two, 8.5. Yeah. Final answer. Yeah, I want to change, change my answer now. <laughs> I think I lost that one. <laughs> Aaron, edit that out. Ed, edit my first answer out so I look smarter. <laughs> now I'm with Sean on this. I totally get it. 8.5s are pretty hard to find. Fuck yeah, man. Uh, Marvel Spotlight. Spotlight. TGC Almanac. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's hard to not the iconic cover that everyone's familiar with. But at the same time, you know, Eight five versus a five five, like around the same price. They're ten. They're ten. They're ten years different in um, in age, though. Are so they? there's that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. At, at least, if not, if not, uh, yeah, around uh, close to ten. Let's call it ten years. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, they're different age, different different era. At Spotlight Two is a square bound. Um, you can almost the 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 ink on the first page of Marvel Spotlight Two would would actually almost bleed through the cover, for whatever reason. Like you can see even on the highest graded one, you can almost see through that cover, and boot that square bound, the glue and stuff like that. It's 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 extraordinarily extraordinarily difficult to press. Uh, I've never looked up a Spider Man Fifty, but I I'd venture to say that at least. Uh, 9.8s at least exist. I can't think of another key from the era of Marvel Spotlight 2 that there is not even one 9.8 of. There might be books that people didn't bother to grade, but definitely not a first appearance key that doesn't have a 9.8 and only has, I think, two 9.6s. Maybe, wow. maybe, maybe three or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, But, I mean, okay, so my point being that also that Disney, you know, they plan to do rated R movies, or stuff like you know geared towards more adults or like even teenagers. So you know, what better way than like a monster universe or or horror themed like universe within Marvel? Like they're gonna have to eventually like find some middle ground between like you know if they aren't gonna do like super violence or they're gonna have to do like some sort of like you know mental mind fuck basically. So I'm gonna have to go with the Marvel Spotlight number two also. I mean, it wasn't there. Wasn't there sort of the monsters announcement at um, earlier? Earlier was it this year? Yeah, like I, I, I remember they got big. Because um, what was that other one that Marvel Marvel feature right that had like the monsters on the cover? Was it Marvel mm. feature or I forget? Marvel Legion premiere. That's what it is. Say, yeah, Marvel premiere twenty eight. Yeah, that's one with the yellow cover. Yeah. Monsters go to Hollywood. I mean, it's just. I mean, that's great. And that thing's a two thousand dollar ninety eight. And like I said, I don't know. It could, it could have gone up by now. Um, but and I and I was I was like oh that's high for a nine eight like a couple of years ago because it's it's one of my favorite books I've got a Mark Jeweler's nine six and uh, so all you know difficult to find like that too so I'm not upset with my my consolation prize <laughs> but you know um, that that's on, that's on my short list because I just like the monsters I've always been a Morbius fan werewolf fan uh, that that's that that's always been me Ghost Rider, well they've got Ghost Rider lumped in too so him him as well it's not a traditional monster like a vampire or werewolf but yeah. 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 Well, I want to give a special thank you for Brian for showing up and playing Dealer Flipside. Oh, this was awesome. I had fun. Oh, cool. So, you know, feel feel free to come back anytime we, we host this. So, yeah. I reserve the right Always. to change my opinion at any time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like you're throwing real money at this, right? We're just using Monopoly money. <laughs> Never <All right>. know. <laughs> <laughs> I hear all those clicks and people like, Purchasing while we're doing this, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Then you hear other people's eBay's like you sold the notifications going off. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and catch all of our great content in our next episode of Dealer Flipside. Y'all take it easy. Take it easy.